It's YouTube Wednesday. <sighs> so, today, uh, we're going to actually paint a latex mask. Uh, it's going to go pretty quick. Uh, this is a design I've painted a couple times before. Uh, this is my pig and mask. Um, that one right there is actually getting shipped to J-Wall very soon. Uh, he does Hunter's Hangout. Um, very cool guy. If you don't know that show, uh, definitely check it out. It's also one heck of a Facebook group. So check out Hunter's Hangout on Facebook. Um, very cool place for uh, people who make stuff to uh, get together and share ideas. Um, but speaking of sharing ideas, let's talk about painting a latex mask. Um, I have it already trimmed. It came out of the mold. I trimmed it. You don't want to paint it until after you have the eyes cut, the nose cut, the ears cut, anything you're cutting out. Because when you cut it, that's going to be raw latex showing. So if you don't cut the eyes out and you then paint it and then cut the eyes out, you'll have raw latex around those edges. And right now, you have a chance to paint them. So I'm going to use an airbrush for this. Uh, my compressor is actually out in my garden shed, and I have an airline that's run uh, through a hole in the wall into my garage. That way I don't have to hear compressor noise all the time. I have a big air compressor, but I've got it onto a, on a splitter, and it's on a pressure gauge, so I can dial down the pressure from that air compressor. It's putting out 110 PSI. I am painting right now with about 50 PSI. Uh, that's good for getting the latex paint out and onto the mask. There's a splitter on this. It's on a quick connect. This is on a splitter. That way I can have an air gun on here, whatever, to blow the molds out. Any other kind of air attachment I can have on this. But I have a splitter on here now, and I have an eighth inch connection and the, the Pache connection. All right, I'm going to be using a Pache H airbrush. And I'm going to be using this $10 airbrush from Harbor Freight which is one of my favorite pieces of equipment in the world. If I had one airbrush to do everything with, it would be this. Whether that's makeup, whatever, it does stencils great. It's a $10 airbrush. I shouldn't have to sell you a $10 airbrush. It's $10. Just get one and try it. Paint that I'll be using. I'm going to uh, talk about my paint mix. I have my paint over here. And it's all kind of pre-mixed. Uh, I keep it in these containers so I can kind of shake it up, put it in the airbrush, and be good to go. A lot of them have little caps on them. Those are nice. Uh, I lose those little red caps all the time, though, and I just uh, I have them uncapped. You know, if it dries up in the end, hey, it made its own cap. That's great. But uh, I keep a lot of colors. Uh, there's colors that I go to a lot, and I use more of. I'll be using a lot of flesh toned. Uh, I'll be using some flesh toned today. Um, but uh, I have a good, healthy mix of colors. Know what you need and mix it up ahead of time. How do you mix it? I'm not going to show you guys how to mix it because just it's it's an unnecessary time step. All right, you're going for consistency. Uh, don't worry about color because color changes. Um, if you ever bought red paint? You you open it up it's like, oh my god, this is pink house paint. Well, that's because the pigments change as it dries. So go for consistency. It's got to be able to shoot through your airbrush. That's the big deal. Over here, I have a bunch of, when I started doing masks, it's latex house paint, all right? I, buy, I bought quarts of it, a bunch of different colors, uh, every color that I would need. I'm not painting with just this, though. What I am painting with is one-third latex house paint, one-third distilled water one-third mask casting latex. Uh, I learned that from Ed Edmonds at Distortions about 20 years ago and um, it's a formula that's never failed me. One-third, one-third, one-third. Uh, that'll go through an airbrush. Can you thin it a little bit by adding more water? Sure. Can you thicken it a little bit by adding a little more latex? Absolutely. Um, you get a color really true to the paint color that you pick. All right, and you, if you look inside, it looks pink. Look on the outside, it dries, it becomes red. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is give this mask a wash. Um, I'm kind of cheating because this mask's color, 
I want it to look a lot like flesh. I'm going to actually use the latex color here kind of as a base. I do that on everything that I do that's flesh and then uh, I'll do a wash over top of this and then I'll airbrush my details. Wash is the same way, only it's got a little bit more water in it. So let me get painting. How I have my mask set up. So let me widen out a little bit and I will show you. These are clamps. All right, they've got this nice long bar end. They uh, adjust really fast and I can just go to my table edge and clamp this sucker down on my table by giving it a squeeze and then my mask wig head goes right here. You can get different lengths for different heights and uh, I have about 10 of these set up in my shop so that I can uh, have a bunch of different masks being painted at once. That's a real easy way to do it. When I want to move the mask that's wet away from the painting area over the drying area, I unclamp it and I carry it over and I clamp it down to the other table where fans are set up. Easy as pie. Boom, let's get this guy painted. I have a wash. This is latex and extra water to make it a little bit thinner because I don't want to paint necessarily with this. I just want it to catch in all my detail. Now in this is actually not uh, latex paint, uh, and that's just because it happens to be what I'm painting this mask. This is my, it's a little bit of latex paint, but the cream color, and the saddle tan leather stain that I use on almost everything. I'm just giving this a good healthy base, and I'm putting this on really wet. Like I said, it's a wash, so it's thinner than normal. So I'm actually going to rub this off just a little bit with paper towel. All right, so this is still really wet and I can rub it with this paper towel and that is going to give me, uh, it's kind of a rub out technique. Um, it's an antiquing technique, but that's going to give me a nice base layer with some variance in it because uh, now it has settled into the deep spots and left those darker. I'm rubbing it off. It's still stained the latex really well um, and it's going to stay on nice. It's got that latex in it but I didn't have to you know, kill myself painting inside of all those lines. It's a nice antique. All right, that's a good base coat. So now I want to get my Pache H out. A Pache H is a single action airbrush, meaning I push it down, I get paint and air at the same time. How I adjust how much paint is I can slide this little cone back and forth. All the way out is a lot of paint. All the way down, almost no paint. I'm using a color cup uh, because of how often I'm going to change colors on this mask. If I was if I was going to change colors quickly, I'd probably go with bottles, which I have plenty of bottles. But I'm just using a color cup. Doesn't matter which one you use. Here I have my pre-mixed black. It is one third distilled water, one third casting latex that I poured up the masks with, one third latex house paint. I'll check my line. I, I check it on the back of my hand because I'm not terribly professional. I'm going to tighten it up. I want a thinner line. So I screw down. Now, every line I make is going to be that thick. I don't have to worry about having how much finger pressure, how much I'm pulling back. That's why I like this. Especially on a mask like this where I'm trying to control. I'm going down inside of these stitches. You should come with me. When I'm right here, uh, I'm, I'm not scared to use my finger to wipe off any excess. I'm still wet here. I should let this dry, but uh, I want to make sure I get this shot for y'all. So I am going to press on 
and any excess I'm just wiping off with my finger. And this is black, so I'm just doing the deepest of the deeps. And once again, a little too much, wipe it off. You can use your finger, you can use a, uh, have a rag ready. Now, I tend to paint my masks for haunted house conditions, which are a lower light. They're a little bolder, but uh, you see a lot of paint jobs on the Trans World show floor that are beautiful. But as soon as you see it in show light, it turns into mud. And uh, I, don't, I don't want that. I want to be able to kind of tell what color it is. I want to be able to, to see the detail in it. I tend to paint from back to front. Uh, I want to paint the deepest first, and as I get further and further out on the mask, that is when, uh, that'll be my last color. Like I'll do my highlights last. Some people are opposite of that. Uh, now I have two colors on this mask, and uh, you can see that it's, it, it's starting to pop here. I, I just have two colors on it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with the third color. I'm going to clean out my airbrush. Uh, just by running, because I have water mixed in here, I'm going to clean it out with water. If I was using alcohol-based makeup, I would clean it out with alcohol. I always keep a spray bottle full of water with me right by my airbrush, because now I can actually shoot water down into that airbrush, and that gets it clean a little bit faster. I open it all the way up so I can really get liquid moving through it, and uh, just Shoot that down in there, and in no time, I'm shooting clear, which is what you want. I can tell my airbrush is hydrated. I'm going with like a plum color, pre-mixed, one-third distilled water, one-third uh, latex house paint in the color of my choosing, and one-third casting latex. Thank you, Ed Edmonds. This is going to do a couple things for me. It's going to be irritation around the wounds. Oh, I got to close it down. Remember, I had it wide open while I was cleaning it. It's going to be some irritation around these wounds. So I'm going around the wounds, kind of on both sides. I'm going to put a little red under the eye, no matter what. That adds a little bit of light, you know? Uh, this eye here has a wound on it, so I'm going to make sure I hit all that with this good purple color. I'm hitting all down the sides of this wound, so I know that's irritated. This is this mask is made out of several pigs that are sewn together, so it makes sense that that skin around there would be a little bit irritated. Uh, I'm gonna hit the lip. That's a good lip color. On the other nose and the other nose. I said it's a couple pigs stitched together. So I'm gonna hit up here, around those eyes, those dead eyes that are all nasty and sewn shut. And I'm gonna look, where else did I hit? This webbing, inside the teeth here. All those gums ought to be this color. I don't care if I get some on the teeth, I'm gonna paint the teeth in there. And I'm gonna bring this around, look at all these other parts. So I'm gonna to move to another color, which actually I'm gonna go with a bolder red. Uh, that was more of a mauve or a purple. Uh, I'm gonna go right into a red. Uh, you'll notice I am shaking my paint. This doesn't settle much, but it can settle a little bit. So shake it between every use. And I said I was going to a stronger red. It won't look stronger at first, but it will when it dries. Close it down to where I want. I wanna control this. Normally the brighter the color, the finer the control you want because <clears throat> too much of that color, it's just going to be too much, you know, that's, I guess that's the easy way to say it. Too much is too much, man. Alright, so I'll pop in. I said this was a wound here, so I'm really going to hit that red area. And now, I'm just going to break up this skin pattern too. I'm going to go real fine with my line. So, uh, I've, I'm going to, I have red in here now, 
and I did some on this wound here on the on the eye but what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna just do some modeling with it which is making a pattern on the skin to break it up this is a lot of flat big flat surface yes there's texture in there but I want to break that up even further with paint by paint another texture so it's a, another layer to the skin and I'm going to fine line what I'm really doing is just big scribbles. And that's going to look like blood vessels breaking. It's just going to be distressed, patterned skin. I'm not afraid to, you know, shade the inside of that ear with it. You know, who cares? What I'm doing is I'm really breaking up the fact that I use one color to cover all of this skin. Now it's going to add some detail in there, some distress. This is skin that's been through trauma. I'm going to open it up a little bit. And where I did black down in here, I'm going to go over that with the red. It's going to be one more layer in there. Uh, the red is not strong enough to cover black. You don't really cover black, but I knew that that black was so far down there, I'm going to cover it up eventually. All right, that's nice. That's nice. Now those wounds are nice. They're popping. They're festery. You know, I like All right, that's actually, that's looking pretty good. You know, I'm liking that. Uh, that feels nice. Uh, I might want to model with another color. Um, I don't like doing that on this mask, but you know you're probably not painting this exact same mask. Uh, so you know you'll you're gonna have your own challenges and your own design choices to make. So you know when you do that, just kind of break up the big patterns with some modeling. You can model with you know two colors. I like this to feel a certain way, so I only do it with the one color on these masks. Clean it while it's wet. Don't wait. Number one if issue with airbrushes is they're dirty airbrushes. And they're dirty airbrushes because you're lazy. You're lazy. You're not cleaning your airbrush. That's the problem you're having. Um, that's normally the problem. Sometimes you get a cracked cone or whatever. Not too often with a Pache H. This is a uh, keep it simple, stupid. You know, single action. Less likely to clog, less likely to break. I mean, there's just a. Uh, I like it. It's like me, simple but strong. All right, uh, next color on this mask. I'm actually now moving away from the airbrush. I'm gonna hit all these stitches with a hand brush and I'm gonna hit the teeth with a hand brush. I'm taking the same paint that I'm using uh, through the airbrush and I'm just gonna do it with a, with a brush. Just have a plastic lid I'm gonna use as a palette. Put some paint down. I'm gonna get after these teeth first. Uh, could I airbrush these teeth? Absolutely. Uh, no problem at all with airbrushing the teeth. Um, and you, you, it makes it look a little bit less realistic when I hand paint them the way that I do, but that's less realistic right here in the full lights of the shop when this mask is in semi-darkness the way that I intend it to be used. I'm painting it for how I intend it to be used. Um, those teeth are going to pop. They're going to show up. Something with teeth is dangerous. So that is what I want in uh, the masks that I make. You got to paint both sides of your teeth. Uh, on some masks that's kind of difficult. Uh, especially with an airbrush because you'll hit that lip if you're not careful. Now, on my lip, all right, I have some paint left on my brush. I'm going to do one drag, and this is if it's a person's lip or a monster's lip, I'm going to do one fine drag of white. I'm going to rub most of that away. And that's going to be my highlight on that lip, and that's going to help make that look wet. That's going to be glistening. 
And I'm just going to do a little, little bit of that right here on the nose, just a little bit of that, just to make it glisten, you know, make it, make it pop that much more. Okay, but I just did a little bit of that. I'm going to take my white, I'm going to add another color to the white in order to make the uh, string color. I have a little bit of a, like a periwinkle blue here. I'm going to put that down. I'll mix a little bit of white in with it. I think that'll be nice and strong color-wise. It'll stand out from the skin. And I'm just mixing this on this palette. My palette's off camera, but uh, I'm just picking out all of these laces that I did. And I'm going to run a bead of paint right on top of them. When I did that wash, that kind of wrapped around them. So if I just hit the tops, I've got a darker color already in those bases. So that wash is doing work for me even now at this latest stage of painting, even though it's the first thing I laid down. When I had the black, I shot it down in all these little holes. So I can paint, you know, close to those. And that wash and that black that I did as a base coat is helping me out. That earlier work is paying dividends now by adding depth and adding realism to these laces. And I kind of like this blue-gray color for them. It's very different. The whole this whole mask is warm. You know, it's got that nice warm umber tone. It's got reds. Uh, it's, a, it's a very warm mask, so these these kind of pop. So I showed you a wash. I have shown uh, airbrushing a little bit. I have shown. A little bit of hand painting. Um, I'm not a, I, I'm not a super great painter. I'll be honest with you. I can get you started in the right direction. Um, I am painting for haunted house lighting conditions. That's what I work under. That's what I make everything for. Could this be used on a roaming actor who's outside? Absolutely. Might you want to touch it up a little bit with your own style and your own paint if you get it for that? I think you would. I, I would. Nothing comes to you finished. I've told you. I've been making this for how I intend it to be used. Um, you might be using it differently than me, even though I'm the artist and I'm the guy who designed it. Here we have a pig and mask. It is uh, painted up. Uh, nice and fun. Actually, it's a pretty quick paint job. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing to it. I'm going to hit it with something to make it glossy. There's a lot of different things that you can use. It's called Plastidip Glossifier. All right, this makes stuff glossy. It's meant to go on stretchy stuff, Plastidip. So let me clean up a little bit here. I'm going to hit it around the eyes, around both eyes. I think noses should be wet. Hit that pig nose a little bit, hit that pig nose a little bit, hit this whole lip and tooth section. Boom, right there. And uh, you know what? I'll just go over all the wounds. I don't want to glossify the whole thing, but I do want uh, all those wounds to stand out. So now, I have a mask that has detail. I have a mask that has detail. I have a mask that has contrast. I have a mask where all the flat surfaces are broken up. <coughs> and uh, I've hit the teeth. It's glossy. It looks wet where it should look wet. Um, look at that little bit of highlight on the lip. You know, you can kind of see that there. Um, that's fun. It's ready to be scary. Go make stuff.